I don't know kind of how it happens, um, but I think fundamentally it's all about venture capital. The more money that's available uh, and the, the more sort of the culture is about going out and raising money and the more it just happens and it sort of feeds on itself. Um, if the venture capitalists weren't there, there'd be a lot of empty companies that wouldn't be there. Uh, and that'd probably, I think, probably be better. Not in every case, but in most cases. I think it's better when you are forced as an entrepreneur to bootstrap. And here's the fundamental reason why. If you have two companies, one that's bootstrapped, one that's you know, self-funded, one that's got venture capital money in the bank, the primary difference is this. On day one, a bootstrapped company has to make money. On day one, a funded company has to spend money. They have like money in the bank to spend. That's their first task is to spend, to hire, to get a great beautiful office, to do all that stuff. That's what they have to do. They have to spend money. Unlike a bootstrap company that doesn't have money to spend, they have to make money first. And I think that's the right instinct for an entrepreneur to start out with is the idea of I got to make money. That's the, right, that's the right thing. And I think what happens is, especially in, in Silicon Valley, where there's a lot of spare money around, people are handing it out, essentially, um, that you don't have the instinct. The instinct isn't built to make money. The instinct is built to spend money. And that just kind of perpetuates itself. And people don't have to make money because other people are paying for things until the money runs out. And then you're kind of screwed. And then it's too late because you don't have the skills to make money. So that's, I think, the problem with Silicon Valley. Well, I think the thing is, is that not having money or having to make your own forces you to make really smart decisions and good decisions and makes you think about stuff. Like, if, for example, you know, if you go out, if you win the lottery, um, you're probably not going to make good decisions about how to spend your money. You've got a lot of it. So you just say, hey, I'll buy a house, I'll buy a, a boat, I'll buy this stuff. Like, you're not actually making decisions, you're just spending money. But when you have very limited resources, you're forced into making decisions that make sense. Does it make sense for us to spend this money on marketing? We have it. Should we just blow it? Or are we not going to get a return on it? Uh, and you start to think about these things and you start to find yourself wondering, like, does it make sense to hire 20 people or should we hire two? We can afford to hire two. So let's hire two really good people because that's all we can do. And when you're forced to, like, force in those constraints, you just make better decisions. I always look at, this is probably a weird analogy, but I tend to look at prisoners in jail, how they make these weapons where they'll take like a pen and like a piece of tape and a, and a comb and they, make, they can like break out of prison with that. But if someone had all the money in the world to break out of prison and they would like buy a jackhammer and they would buy like, you know, chisels and stuff, they'd make too much noise, they'd, they'd attract too much attention and it wouldn't work. They'd have all the resources, but they'd spend them, they wouldn't spend them wisely. But the person who has no resources has to make something that's very, very, very simple and that just is effective. And that's sort of the mentality I think that you see in bootstrap companies. Like, we don't have the resources, we've got to make something that makes sense, and we only really have one shot at it, so we're going to do a good job. And just do exactly what we need and not all the things that we could do. I think we probably would have hired a lot of people if we had a lot of money. Uh, that's just something you tended to do in the, in the late 90s. I heard so many companies say, we're going to staff up. That is the stupidest fucking thing to say. Staff up? We're going to staff, how about... We're going to hire somebody that we need. What is this idea of staffing up? There was, this, there was this thing going on in the 90s. I remember people saying, like, we're going to staff up to 100. Or people were saying, our company is this big. When they're talking about this big, they're talking about employees. And, and it was very easy to get carried away with that and thinking, like, that you're inferior unless you have a lot of employees. So I think that's something we probably would have done. We probably would have put money into marketing. That would have been a waste of money. We probably would have put a ton of money into PR. That would have been a waste of money. And it wouldn't have forced us to be creative about how to get the word out, which is something we've learned how to do over the past 10 years without having to spend money. So uh, we would have bought some stuff and maybe done some things, but I think the real thing is we would have missed learning the important lessons. Uh, that's what I think we would have suffered most over. Well, my feeling is that like the stuff that I like to talk about is really about my business, my industry. So I'm not, my ideas don't necessarily make sense for a restaurant or for, a, you know, Boeing, for example. Um, but their ideas don't make sense for me either. So they shouldn't be giving me advice and I shouldn't be giving them advice. What I think, though, is in the software business, which is the business we're in, or a service business, which is the business a lot of people are in outside of the technology world, where you don't have, you don't have to have a factory, you don't have to have raw materials, you don't have to have machinery, you don't have these upfront costs that would typically require you to raise capital. Um, if you don't have those costs, then you shouldn't get the money that you might need to spend to buy those things. In the software business, you need a computer and an internet connection 
it's like, you know, a couple grand to get started. If, but if I'm building a factory and I'm making widgets, I might need to, you know, raise hundreds of thousands or a few million bucks to make that big capital expenditure. So I think if you don't have the raw capital expenditure requirements, then you should not be raising money up front.